I've had the Chidi Q2 3D printer for the past four months. Had I made a video three months ago, it would have been very different and very negative. Let's talk about it. This printer has been a roller coaster of emotions. I've been 3D printing since 2017 and have owned over 40 different printers. And this one was tricky. Things were good, then they were bad, then they got really good. <laughs> we'll talk about what was good, looking at the features and why the Q2 is unique. Then we'll talk about the bad and it was pretty bad. Then we'll talk about why it went from bad to really good. The Chidi Q2 comes with a fully enclosed build chamber, which is great for printing more demanding materials. It supports high temperature printing and has a very sturdy metal frame. Pretty much everything you'd expect today, plus a direct drive extruder, a heated bed, and a hardened steel nozzle out of the box. The first thing that makes this printer unique is the heated chamber. We're making a video where we compare this printer to the Bamboo Lab P2S and the Anycubic Cobra S1. Of those three printers, the Chidi Q2 is the only one with a heated chamber. The other two don't come with a heater. Something else that makes this unique is the top glass. When printing PLA or other cooler filaments, you can slide open the glass so the chamber doesn't get too hot. I've never seen that before. Some printers have a little spot that opens up, but this one allows you to slide open the glass so the print doesn't get too hot. Just a quick spoiler alert, opening up this glass is absolutely necessary when printing PLA. Trust me, I learned the hard way and you'll find out how. The Chidi Q2 has some of the best bed adhesion ever. This is a good thing. I've never had any parts falling off the bed and I've put over 600 hours on this machine. Chidi wanted me to tell you the Chidi Q2 is US MET certified. Currently, no other printer on the market has this certification and they have specifically obtained the certification to provide users with peace of mind when using their products. I had to look this up. I didn't know what the US MET certification meant, but basically, Basically, it means it's been tested and found to meet applicable national safety requirements like fire, shock, and other hazards. So this printer is extra safe. The last unique design I'll mention is the belts. Unlike the P2S and the S1 Cobra and many other printers, the belts on the Chidi Q2 use a custom 1.5 GT belt. The distance between the grooves in the belt are 1.5 millimeters versus the standard 2 millimeters. What does that mean? Well, it has a high higher tooth density and ultimately gives a finer, cleaner surface on a print. This gets into a rabbit hole called vertical fine artifacts or VFAs, which are tiny repeatable vertical lines or ridges or ripples on the surface of a 3D print. These are caused by vibrations and motor movements from the printer and maybe the printer table or where it's standing. That's as deep as I'll go on the topic for now, but you can visibly see a cleaner finish on this cup printed with the Q2 versus this cup printed on the P2S. Again, we're making a video where we compare these printers and give our recommendation, but this is a huge plus for the Chidi Q2. We've talked about the features that make this printer unique and high quality. Now let's talk about my experience using it with and without the Chidi box. Before I do that, this video is sponsored by Chidi. They aren't paying me for the video, but they did supply this printer for me to give an honest review. They also are not telling me what I can or can't say, except for the US MET certification. If you'd like to pick one up, I've dropped an affiliate link down below. Using that link really helps us out and doesn't cost any more to you. When the printer first arrived, it didn't come with the filament system called the Chidi box. I set up the printer, ran the calibration test, added filament, and started printing these soda cans out of Rainbow PETG. They came out looking better than any other printer in this price range. I print these on multiple printers, and thanks to the upgraded belts, they just look amazing. That surface finish, the vertical lines, you can't really see those vertical fine artifacts at all. When the Chidi box arrived, I got so excited. I hooked it up, added filament, and tried printing an octopus. Actually, I tried printing nine of them. They started out strong, they were printing really well, and then I got this error. Extruder unloading failure. I couldn't get the printer to start up again. So goodbye, Octopi. Or is it octopuses? Hold up.
octopi and octopuses are both commonly used and accepted plurals of octopus, though octopuses is generally preferred as the standard English form, while octopi comes from a mistaken Latinization of the word. Huh. I learned something new today. I tried starting the octopus print again and got the same error. This time the printer detected there was a filament clog and tried to shake the filament loose. I have never seen this before and it gives me hopes that they really thought about this printer. They thought about when there's a clog, can we shake that clog loose? Unfortunately, that didn't work in my case. I had to take apart the extruder and manually unclog the nozzle. I hoped this was a one-time thing, so I started the octopus print again and about halfway up it clogged again. What is happening? Goodbye octopuses. Meh, it's more fun to say goodbye octopi. After having the same issue twice, I decided to try a different print with different filament. This one looked good at first, then I got a new error. Detected wrapping filament? I've never seen this before. I decided to resume the print and see what would happen. It gave the same error again. Shocker. I checked the filament and it looked fine, except there was a dent on the cardboard spool. I slapped some tape on it and then I decided to check online and the Cheaty Wiki said, the Cheaty box is not compatible with cardboard spools. Half of my spools are cardboard. I started winding a plastic spool by hand, but that was taking way too long. So I printed this on the Bamboo Lab H2S, a filament respooler device. I chose to use this filament respooler because it doesn't require screws, it doesn't require any bearings, it just works by itself. It's a free model, I'll drop a link down below. This print came out beautifully and allowed me to transfer the spool in about 90 seconds with a drill. I started the narwhal again and it actually finished. My first complete complete multicolor print on the Chidi Q2 and it looks really good. Did we just solve the issue because of the cardboard spool? Let's try printing 10 of these and see what happens. They're looking good so far. It's printing the eyes now, uh, and now it's not working. There's another clog in the extruder. We've already lost 18 octopuses. Can I fix this clog and save these 10 narwhals? Let's see. I took the extruder apart again, fixed the clog, and hit resume. It started printing again, but look how far it is from the print. That's at least a 10 millimeter gap. I have to cancel this print. Goodbye, narwhal. That doesn't rhyme. Without changing anything, I decided to run the print again, and this time it finished. But their horns look like they were overcooked, and there's a lot of stringing, which gave me an idea. Maybe I should actually listen to the instructions on top of the printer and open the sliding glass roof door when printing PLA. When the Cheaty box arrived, it also came with this extender, which has additional cooling vents on the sides. Let's open those up and open the glass and open the door just for extra cooling and see how this does. I'll try printing the octopuses again. This time, let's go all out. Let's fill the bed to the brim with 20 octopuses. They're looking good so far. They're still printing. They just passed the eyes without issues. And they're done. We have finally printed 20 successful octopuses. It's about time. <laughs> And let's do some more. We have put nearly 700 hours on this printer and have printed over 200 octopuses, octopi, tomato, potato. Things are now looking really good. If you are paying attention, you'll notice I broke a rule. I used a cardboard spool with the octopus print. And that's because I noticed something. The cardboard for the narwhal got chewed up by these studs on the left side of the Chidi box. Only the far left and the far right slots have those studs. The two middle slots worked great with cardboard. I even had a spool run out and it automatically switched to the next spool without issues. The Cheaty Box has some great qualities, but also some things I hope they change. First, the good. You can place all four filaments at the same time. The box will automatically detect the first one, then move to the second, the third, and the fourth, and prep each filament one at a time. If you have Cheaty filament with the RFID chip, it will automatically detect that filament color and that filament type. If not, you can do it easily from the screen like this. I really like how you can see the humidity levels from the screen, and this box can heat up and 
continue heating while printing abrasive materials. Bamboo Lab doesn't allow that yet. Now, if you're printing PLA, it won't even let you heat up the machine unless you unload it first. And that's because Chidi said they worry it'll make the PLA too soft and it'll get chewed up by the extruder gears, which I believe could happen. Now let's talk about changes I hope to see. First, when you unload a spool, you can't just pull it out. You have to select it and click remove or unload. This isn't the end of the world, but what if you have a print going and you need to remove a spool that isn't being used in that print? It just doesn't work. You have to wait or you can cut them. Something else I don't like is the noise of the spool winder. It sounds like a galloping horse. Just listen. It's so loud that I can't have it in my office when I'm on calls or even when I'm filming a video. It's just, it's too loud. It sits there and clicks. For the cardboard spools, I don't know why they didn't make it compatible. Tons of people use cardboard spools. It's more eco-friendly, but I'm glad it worked if you use the two slots in the middle. I'm not saying you should do that, but it worked for me this time. So would I recommend this printer? Well, before I do that, we'd love for you to subscribe. We're almost at our next goal. We have a ton of printers being released this year, 2026. I can't tell you which ones they are, but subscribe if you want to see those printers the day they come out. I don't say this very often, but this printer is one of the top five 3D printers on my list. It works every time without fail as long as you follow the instructions. I wish it were more quiet, but if you need a machine that is reliable, safe, and can print abrasive materials with a heated chamber, this is an excellent option. And I'm not just saying that because they gave me this printer. I truly believe it. If you're still on the fence on which printer to choose, take a look at this video.